Now, the other main color of light that we can see that's transparent through the Earth's atmosphere is radio waves. That's right. Um, and this is also widely used for Earth observation. To begin with, there were a lot of spy satellites that would listen into the radio communications. So for a long time, for example, the microwave link that was used by the Soviet leadership to talk to each other, the American spy satellites would listen into that. Mm. They'd use diffraction because not all the beam would go in the right direction. Some would go out sideways and a well-positioned satellite could listen into that. Um, normally radio waves, they have major benefits. They work at night and they work through cloud. Which is not obviously the case with those optical images. Yes, so especially if you're trying to observe what's happening in, I mean, if you're trying to see how many cargo ships are lined up in Rotterdam port, and Rotterdam can easily be cloudy for months at a time. <laughs> so uh, we're just waiting for it to have a clear sky so we can see. But, but the radio could observe all the time. Yes. Um, the drawback is radio waves being so long that a fracture is really bad, so you get very poor image quality. But there's a way to cheat this, which is what's called a synthetic aperture radar. Okay. We talked a bit about this for the, the, uh, the uh, Starlink yes. antennae. Here, you don't have multiple antennae. What you do is you use the same antenna, but it moves as it flies along in space. Okay. So as your spacecraft's flying off, you fire out a radar beam sideways. Yep. And by looking at the same place from different angles, and also measuring how long the signals take to bounce backwards and forwards very precisely, you can actually get a three-dimensional image of what you're looking mm. at with high resolution. It takes a lot of processing, yeah. and the result is often a bunch of equations rather than an image. But that might be enough. If you just want to know where an aircraft carrier is or something, that's all you might need to know. That's right. You don't care what it necessarily looks like. You just need to pinpoint its location. But if you take long enough data and do clever enough analysis, you can produce images. Like here's a, a picture of the island of Tide in the Canaries. Um, here's an image of a, a uh, baseball oval in an American I was about to base. say, that's exactly what that looked like, yep. Um, and you can see sort of trees. The radio waves probably go through a lot of the leaves, so it's... Yeah, it kind of looks cloudy. You can see some other structure over here. Yep, and here's a car park with an uh, aircraft and a helicopter. This is a museum, I think, with these things parked, again, in a military base. Yep. Um, you can also see the long shadows, that's because your radio waves are coming in from this direction. So uh, someone's yeah, hiding yeah. behind the radio is going to be intercepted by the tree. Um, but that's not bad. Yep. And uh, I guess it's the benefit is you could have taken this image at night or through clouds or anything else. That's right, probably everything except very heavy rain. Um, and even then you get something probably out. So this is much harder. You're not going to image anything like as wide an area. You don't get any colour information or spectral information. But if you want reliable, you need to have an observation like every... 12 hours, yep. this is the only thing that will get through the clouds. So, the, so it really depends on, again, what you want to look at, how often, and why, really. And there are commercial providers doing this now. It can be done from relatively small satellites yep. in low Earth orbit, and uh, that's probably another, also a rapidly growing field. Mm. 